Allahumma salli. Uh, salli. We didn't explain salli because we already explained it in the um, Salatul Fatih in the um, That the meaning of Allahumma is to invoke Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala with his uh, all his attributes, all his uh, great names. Can you please ensure that the children don't run around because they disturb the, the flow of the program? Um, the, 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 the the, 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 the divine name Allahumma, it, it's, a, it's a name which uh, possesses within itself <laughs> an address to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and all his divine names and all his qualities and all his attributes and all his asma and all his sifat. Um, this name comes a, a, a couple of times in the Quran. Like Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said, uh, teaching the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the uh, following prayer, which is in the Holy Quran, Allah said, Qul, say, Qulillahumma malika al-mulki tu'ut al-mulka man tasha'u, 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 tu'ut al um, that taught the Prophet Sallallahu how to address him through specific words in the Quran. Allah uh, use the word Allahumma, right? Say Allahumma, Bismillahumma, uh, Malikal Mulki, the King of all kings, Malikal Mulki, or the one who, uh, the King of, uh, who possesses. Sovereignty, dominions, Malikal Mulki, Mulki means dominions and sovereignty. Right. You give dominion and sovereignty to whomsoever you wish. Right. You elevate and exalt whomsoever you wish. You put down and debase and lower anyone you wish. You put All goodness is in your hand. Right. Yeah, so that is the prayer in which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala taught the Prophet وسلم, to recite in the Holy Quran. And it is also one of those verses in the Holy Quran that are referred to as the Asabatu, uh, not Asabatu Rasul, but the Manzil, Manzil Ayat. The certain ayat in the Holy Quran that are taken, three of them, they have a special secret and a special significance. The Manzil Ayat, they cure more than a hundred diseases. The Manzil Ayat, they cure more than a hundred diseases. All of these ayats, they come from the Holy Quran. Uh, in any case, um, what makes the ayahs and the prayer powerful is the manner in which Allah is being addressed. It's the manner in which Allah is being addressed. And that's why one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ya Arham ar Ya Arham ar Ya Arham ar The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned to him and said, You have just called on Allah by His greatest name. Ask whatever you want, you will be granted. And from this, it is understood the phrase Ya Arham ar contains Allah's greatest name in it. There are many hadiths in which the Prophet indicated where the, great, the greatest name of Allah is, is kept. The greatest name of Allah is a name through which when Allah is invoked by it, Allah answers and responds. Right. Um, so some ulama, uh, have said that in the phrase Allahumma there is hidden inside it Allah's greatest name as well. And then um, the, the, the Shah Ibrahim has mentioned now that we're talking about the Allah's greatest name, <laughs> has mentioned that 
this is the position of many ulama, um, but for Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, there is no such thing as Allah's greatest name. Because whatever name that belongs to Allah is greatest. Because Allah is the greatest. But when you have turned to Allah with any name, and, and, and you enter into a particular state uh, while addressing Allah, and that state of uh, connecting with Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, you call him by any name, that name will become the greatest name. So, so that is also the, another thing that is to be understood. And that explains why you will find in some hadith, Allah pointed out that the phrase Dhul Jalal wa is also Allah's greatest name is in there. Right? Malik al Mulki, also Allah's greatest name is in there. Ya Rahman Rahimin, Allah's greatest name is in there. So there are many other hadiths in which uh, Allah's greatest name has been indicated. Um, in any case, um, so this was the explanation of uh, the phrase Allahumma Salli. Uh, so we explained the word Salli, that means a salutation, the meaning of salutation upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Wasallim, Salim means uh, Ammin Muhammadan Mimma Yakhafu Ala Ummatihi Dunyan wa Ukra. O Allah, uh, grant security upon Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mimma Yakhafu Ala Ummatihi from that which he fears upon his Ummah. Uh, dunyan wa Ukra. What, whatever it is, whether it be of this life or it be of the next life. Whatever it is that the Prophet was concerned about for his ummah, whether it be for this life or for the next life, uh, we, we, we seek Allah's assistance and help in terms of granting security to the Prophet with regards to his ummah. So, and that is the meaning of salam. Salam. Right? We spoke about the salam as one of the divine names of Allah from the Asma or Wal Husna. Um, let me Allah give us salam. Amen. Salam in our pockets. Amen. <laughs> salam in our bodies. Amen. Salam in our souls. Amen. Salam in our hearts. Amen. Salam in our nafs. Amen. Salam in our minds. Amen. Salam in our families. Amen. Salam everywhere. Wherever we are, Allah grant us salam. Amen. We need Allah's salam. <laughs> Allahumma anta salam. Wa salam wa ilayka salam. O Allah, you are the peace, and from you peace come, and to you peace returns. So that is the uh, one of the prayers in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to address Allah by. So the the next portion we spoke about is ala aini, meaning ain means the the self of a thing. The the meaning the the thing it's itself, the very thing itself. In, in this case, uh, the way that comes after Ain uh, is Rahma, Rahma, right? Rahma, that is, uh, in, in other words, the Prophet وسلم, here is referred to as the Rahma itself. He is referred to as the Rahma itself. Right, and what is Rahma? He a ritatun fil qalbi taqtadi al tafadulu wal ihsani. It is a special, uh, a special uh, feeling a person has in the heart towards another that makes that person to want to 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 confer upon them some kind of grace and virtue, and and also to extend some kind of goodness towards them. Right, that is the meaning of uh, a rahma. Right, the Prophet وسلم, is referred to in the Holy Quran as Rahmatun lil alamina. Allah says, Wa ma illa rahmatun lil alamina. We did not send you, O Muhammad, but as a mercy to all the worlds. And, and that explains why in this salawat the Prophet ﷺ is referred to as Ain Rahma, right? Ain Rahma meaning the Rahma yeah, itself. 
Allah says, Wasi'at rahmati kulla shay'in, my rahmat covers everything. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a, is a sabab, is a reason Allah used to contrary his rahmah upon this uh, entire creation. Right? And we mentioned various incidents in details, including the one of Nabi Adam alayhi salam, when Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala addressed Nabi Adam after he said to him, Oh Allah, forgive me uh, through the personality of Muhammad sallallahu Allah asked Adam alayhi salam, if I arafta Muhammad, how do you know of Muhammad? Walam akhluquhu, I have not created him yet. The Prophet sallallahu Adam alayhi salam said, was when, when I was in paradise, when I was in paradise, I saw your name and his name next to each other. And from that, I understood that he must be a special servant of yours. Then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala said to him, We not for Muhammad, who not have created you and the entire world. Right? That is the, uh, the, 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 the honor that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has granted the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, now this Rahma or Rabbaniya, this Rahma it is Rabbaniya. Rabbaniya means that Al Mansubatu ila Rabbi. This mercy it is Rabbaniya, meaning it is emanating from the divine presence. It is emanating from the court of Allah. It is coming directly from the majesty of Allah, from Allah directly Himself. And that's why this mercy it is Rabbaniya. Right? So, and, and hence, with the word Ar-Rahmati, Ar-Rabbaniya, the word Ar-Rabbaniya, it is described through that. Wa nisbatuha li rabbi li kouni hadihi rahma al-mufadatu ala jami'i al-wujudi min nurihi ta'ala al-azaliya. And the reason why it is referred to as Ar-Rabbaniya, it is because of this rahma, it emanates from the divine presence to the entire creation of Allah Ta'ala uh, from his divine light, Al-Azaliya. Azaliya meaning from his perpetual divine light. Right? Um, we spoke about the word Nur. Right? The word Nur, uh, Allah says, Allahu Nur Samawati Wal Ard. Allah is the light of the heaven and the earth. And we spoke about what is the creation itself? What is the heavens and the earth? What are the, where, where do they come from and how do they come about? Right? The creation of the heavens and the earth is nothing but the manifestations of Allah's attributes upon them. So the minute Allah's attributes are lifted up from them, the creation also stops to exist. It becomes non-existent. And hence, we say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. There is no power or might except billah, except by Allah. As, as soon as Allah's attributes are, are removed, the, His manifestations uh, of His attributes are removed from creation, the creation also is no more. So the creation is only standing because of it being supported by the, the, the Allah's attributes, divine names that are manifesting upon it. And that is the, um, um, the, I just wanted to highlight on the word Nur. So now the word Nur also uh, uh, refers to, uh, Imam al-Ghazali talks about this in the in his kitab, Mishkatul Anwar, uh, the Leech for Light, right? It's a very short treatise in which Imam al-Ghazali writes about um, understanding uh, symbolism in the Holy Quran. And then he also talks about the hadith of light. The Prophet uh, was asked by Jibra'il, uh, Jibra'il salam, was asked by the Prophet, he said, have you seen Allah? Jibra'il salam, said, oh Prophet, if I had seen Allah, uh, then he, before he says that, he said, between Allah and myself, there are 70,000 veils of light. Mm. There are 70,000 veils of light, and if I saw the first one, I would be bent into ashes. It was Jibra'il salam, responding to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Imam al-Ghazali discusses this hadith in this kitab. It's called Mishkatul Anwar. 
the need for light or for light. And then also Imam Al Ghazali speaks about this ayah, Allah Nuru Samawati Wal Arabu, the, the, the ayah of light. Um, the uh, it's a, it's a, uh, in, so in any case, the 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 the, 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 the people who, who have traveled far in their journeys, uh, right? The understanding of Nur also refers to the the, the 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 combinations of all the attributes of Allah inside, and that's why when Allah says Allah Nur Samawati Wal Ard, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth, means that. All the divine names and manifestations are, 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 are manifesting, they are shown upon the, the, the creation of the heavens and the earth. Right? So they are, they are manifesting everywhere. They are manifesting everywhere. And hence we say Allah is everywhere. That everywhere is with regards to uh, His manifestations. Right? There is difference between manifestations and essence. And there's difference between manifestations and the essence. Um, okay, let me not deviate too much. And then the next phrase is Waliyakut. Waliyakut ati al mutahakika. Waliyakut. Yakut means it's a, it's a precious stone, right? It's a precious stone which is referred to as a ruby. A ruby. Iche eli kuku. Elibofu, a red, a red, a precious stone. Right? The, 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 now the Prophet is being likened, or metaphor is used here for him as a, a ruby. He is like a ruby amongst all the precious uh, stones that are there. Like he is like a ruby. Even though, in reality, the Prophet is even better than the ruby. <laughs> He's even better than the room because he is Khaira Khalqullah. Right? He's the most beloved of Allah. Right? And Allah created him and made him better than anything else that he ever created. Right? And that's why he is Allah's special servant and slave. Right? So he is Ali Aput. Um, so the reason Ali Yaqut is chosen here because the Annahu Ahsanul Jawahir because it is the best of all the precious stones that are there. Right? Jawahir is the plural of Jawahara and Jawahara means a special and precious stone. Right? So when you say Jawahara to Kaman, so you're saying the precious stone of protection. But also the word Jawahara means essence, means a substance. Right? So uh, and so Jawara to Kamal, so that, that this salawat is basically describing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his outward nature and in his inward nature. Shaykh Ibrahim radiallahu ta'ala anhu said in one of the tafsir, if you want to understand the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in uh, uh, reality, who need surah to Mu'min. Right, one imagine the hawa, Rabbullah sahibukum wa hawa, wa man yalfiqum wa in huwa, in huwa in huwa wa ahlu min muha. Right, that whole surah, if you read it, and then you reflect upon it, then that surah, Allah will bless you with understanding the reality of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you wish to know it. Because there's a lot of secrets that Allah speaks about in that surah, and also Allah speaks about the journey in which the Prophet ﷺ had to take when he went up above the seven heavens. And he went beyond the Sidratul Muntaha, the highest point that any creation of Allah has ever reached. He went beyond that point, right? And Jibra'il is made from light. And he reaches that point and then he says to the Prophet ﷺ, Oh Prophet, if I move beyond this point, I will be bent into ashes. Right. You carry on on your own from this point. The Prophet wasallam said to Jibra'il, how can a friend leave a friend in a place that is, you know, <laughs> you've been traveling with me all, all the way, and now you reach a, a place, now you're saying you can't carry on, I must go on my own. How can a friend leave his friend, you know, in a place that, you know, uh, it's like the Prophet wasallam, now he has to be directed to the next steps of where he needs to go. Then Jibra'il Ali Salam says, Oh Prophet, if I move beyond this point, I will be bent into ashes. And he is created from light. <laughs> right? And the Rasulullah <laughs> Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
he carries on to move beyond the point. <laughs> All the way to where Allah says in Surah Al-Najm, فَكَانَ قَوْبَ قَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَا He reached a point where he was so close that it was like a one arrow's length or two arrow's length. Mm -hmm. Allah says even less than that. Mm -hmm. Adna. Adna means even closer than that. Right. So, and then Allah says, فَأَوْحَا إِلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ مَا أَوْحَا Then Allah re uh, revealed to his slave what he wished to reveal. That's it for Um So, the next phrase is al mutahakika al mutahakika ay al mutasi al mutasifa bi ma'rifati jami' al sifati wal asma'i al ilahiyya allati yatawaqqafu alayha wujud al kun ala wajh al haqq al mutahakika the word al mutahakika is an adjective to the word al mahut the ruby, right? It is an adjective. Adjective is a word that explains and describes the noun, another word, right? Mutahakika means that the one who is described sifati with the knowledge of all of the sifat and the, 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 the qualities and the attributes of Allah wa Ta'ala. Uh, Asma'i and the divine names. So the Prophet ﷺ possesses uh, the knowledge of the attributes and the names, of the, of the, the divine names, and that he yatawakafu. And those names, Sifat and Asma, and that he which yatawakafu alayha wujud al kuni, which the entirety of existence was created from. Right. And uh, I remember I mentioned this last week that uh, when Allah created Adam alayhi salam, He conferred upon him this ma'rifa. And after the Allah says, فَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah created Adam, فَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ And He taught him all the names. He taught him all the names, كُلَّهَا All of them. Right? And then after that, he said to Adam, You call them by these names and name all these names. So Adam salam, named every single thing in existence through this divine knowledge that he received uh, of, 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 of the names. So the, the ulama discuss that the ma'arifa of Allah, the knowledge of Allah, it is something that is... Uh, connected with knowing the divine names of Allah Taala. Allah says in the Holy Quran, "Pas al bihi khabira." Ask the people who are aware concerning Him, if you want to know Him. Uh, and that ayah refers to the ma'rifa, the knowledge of Allah Taala. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, that's what the word al mutahakika is uh, 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 referring to. Then the next part of it, it is al haidu al haid al haidi. In this case, bi markaz al fuhum wa al maani. Al haid means uh, something that surrounds another thing. Something uh, al haid is like a, the, the word al haid literally means a wall. You know, when you build a house and then you put the walls uh, to cover the, the, the house, the, the inner part of the house through the wall. So in Arabic language, we call the, the walls al haid, right? Or the fence that you, you put around your courtyard, we also call it al haid. It's to surround it, to surround it, right? Al haid. Now. This al haiti fi markaz al fuhumi wal maani. He, the, the one who surrounds, right? He surrounds markaz al fuhumi, the center of all understandings. Wal mm. maani the all meanings. Meaning, al uh, al muhitu bil fuhumi jamu fahmin wal maani jamu maanan. هي كالمركز والمركز موضع الشيء المركوز 
والمعنى أنه إذا جمعت الفهوم التي قسمها الله تعالى لخلقه في إدراك معاني كتبه المقدسة وأحكامه الإلهية وأسمائه وصفاته وجعلت كشيء مركوز في الأرض كعصا مثلا كان صلى الله عليه وسلم كدائرة المحيطة المحيطة بها okay. All the divine explanations and understandings and the meanings in which Allah wa Taala has conferred upon His entire creation, meaning from all the prophets, from Nabi Adam alayhi salam all the way to Himself, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, all the meanings and all the ahkams, all the rulings, every single hukum, every single ruling, every single meaning. That is contained in the divine books that Allah revealed to His creation. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All if you take all of those understandings and meanings, you put them in one place, and you make them a center. The Prophet sallam surrounds that center. So his knowledge, uh, it, it it includes all of the divine text. In other words, if the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were to be given Bible that came before him, he will be able to explain all the ahkams in it. He, ha he knows the knowledge that is hidden, all the secrets that is hidden in it. If he was given the Torah, if he was given all the books that were revealed to Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, like Allah says, Sufi Ibrahim wa Musa, right? All the divine revelations that was ever given to any prophet of Allah from before him, he understands all of it, right? He possesses the knowledge of, of, of it, right? He can explain uh, all the meanings behind it. Um, and hence, uh, all the different systems of living that is based on the divine revelation, the Prophet <coughs> would have the knowledge of uh, what you call the knowledge, the knowledge of that. Um, <coughs> the next word is Wanuri Nur Atfina ala ini Rahma Wanuri al Aquan al Mutakawinati, right? And the light of uh, existence al Aquan, al Aquan means existence of, the, of all creations or, or all <coughs> universes al mutakawwinati that have been created, that have been formed. Ay, allati tadharu shay'an ba'da shay'in fa huwa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nuruha al-admiya. Right. Ay, al-mansubu ila Adam wa huwa abu Adam fil asli. Right. Li annahu aslu jami'i al-mawjudat. Okay. So, all the, the, he is the light of all the existences. Right. All the existences that have been created on Mutakawuna, he is that light. Right? Now this light uh, is Wunuruha uh, al-Adamiya. So his light is Adamaic. What is the meaning of Adamaic? Right. Adamaic here refers to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is known or is referred to as Abu Adam. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's referred to as Abu Adam, the father of Adam Phil Asli in, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in his root because um, Nabi Adam alayhi salam uh, was the first human being to appear in the world of forms. Allah made him and created him. If you look at the divine, I mean if you look at the name Muhammad, you, you see the name is, uh, it looks like a human being, right? Meme is the head, the ha is the hands, and the second, the third meme is the stomach, and the and the, al, the last letter is the legs. Mm. Right. So a human being was created in the form and in the shape of Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that is why uh, in some kitabs you will find. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's mentioned here. We say part of the reason Allah will not punish human beings in the form in which they are in, in Akhirah, in Jahannam, they will be given different forms. 
out of honoring of head form because Allah says لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقُولِينَ We created an insan in the best of the mold. In the best of the mold. So Allah chose that mold and, and, and in the story of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam tells Allah wa ta'ala and he says, uh, Oh Allah, this is my father, you can't punish him. Right? Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah tells Ibrahim alayhi salam on human qiyam, he said, but your father used to you know, worship idols. Your father did this and did that. So he is not of you. And so then Allah then tells Ibrahim alayhi salam and he says, look at him. At that moment when Ibrahim alayhi salam looks at his father, according to the hadith of the Prophet sallam, they say Allah would have changed his form into the form of an a, a dhe'abun. A dhe'abun is a, is a wolf. Right? The wolf is, is a, they, they talk about it in Surah Yusuf, you know, they, 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 they took Yusuf alayhi salam, they threw him in the well, his brothers, and then they come to his father, Yaqub alayhi salam, they say the wolf ate him. Right? They say Allah will change his form to be that of an animal because that is the reality of how he was when he was in the dunya. And likewise, every human being, when they, they passed on from this world into the next world, which is a world of realities, they will not retain the form in which they have when they have been uh, thrown into the hellfire, out of honoring of this uh, Adamic form. Right. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, أنا النبي وآدم بين الدين بين الله والدين. I am a Allah made me a prophet while Adam was between water and clay. I was already a prophet. The Prophet Sallam was responding to one of the scholars who asked him, متى وجب النبوة? When did النبوة become واجب upon you? The Prophet Sallam said, أنا النبي وآدم بين الله والدين. I I was a prophet while Adam was between water and clay. Right. So in this Adamic, they say Adam is saw he will happy, right? The, the, the possessor of haq, the, the truth, right? This divine knowledge, sacred knowledge that he, he was blessed with. Uh, it, 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 uh, it refers to this uh, uh, statement of the Prophet وسلم, and hence uh, he's been referred to here as Abu Adam, the father of Adam, because Adam was. He's, he's, the, he's the son because he comes after Nabi Adam in the world of forms, but in the world of spirits, he comes first. Um, <clears throat> Rabbani, again, the word Sahih will haqi, the, the possessor and the owner of truth, Rabbani, this truth is Rabbani, means it is related to a Rab, meaning it is truth that has descended from the Rab, from Allah Ta'ala. Al-Barq, right, Al-Barq means lightning. Na'atun mubinun linuri al-akwani al-muradu bihi al-haqiqatu al-muhammadiyatu. Right. Al-Barq means lightning, right? Uh, he is a, 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 a clear description of the, the light of creation. Al-muradu bihi al-haqiqa. What is intended by it is al-haqiqa al-muhammadiyya. It is the Muhammadan reality. Now, the Muhammadan reality, the haqiqa al-muhammadiyya refers to the, the first light that created to be intended to create creation. Um, and the hadith of light we spoke about it uh, last week. Al Astai, Al Astai is describing this lightning, right? Uh, this nur, this light. A Al Arfa'a wa Al Adhar means it is the most elevated and most appear, what you call uh, in its appearance, uh, uh, what you call uh, most visible than anything else. The <laughs> Muzuni. بمزون متعلق به وهي جمع مزن وهو الصحابة. so مزون is the plural of مزن. مزن is a is a is a cloud. so 
this uh, lightning of rain clouds, right? Al Arbahi. Al Arbahi means it is. Uh, it, it, it contains within itself uh, uh, what you call it? the word Arab Al uh, Arbah uh, 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 is from Arab Hun, which means uh, what you call it? profit or something which you benefit by or something that you receive. So he is being referred to as the the lightning that is accompanied by the rain clouds, right? The rain clouds; those are the clouds that are always accompanied by the lightning. They are usually, they usually contains a lot of water in them, right? And that's why the Prophet ﷺ is being referred to as he is the, the the lightning that is raised high up, and uh, it is contained in the clouds al arbahi that is profitable, meaning it is. Um, uh, it contains a lot of uh, benefits that will come out from it. Right? Well, Hasidu Anna Al Barqu Usta'iru Lil Hakika Al Muhammadiyah, Wal Muzuni Ni in Sibab Rahamati Al Ilahia, Ala Jami Il Mawjudi, Li Anna Al Barqu Mulazimun Li Muzan Il Ampari, Kama Anna Al Hakika Al Muhammadiyah. Mulazimatun uh, Rahmati Al Ilahiya. So the, the word istiar, uh, the word istiar means it's a figure of speech. Like you have a metaphor, you have a similar, a simil, you have a, uh, a personification. Uh, all of this um, in Arabic language, there is a metaphor that is referred to as istiar. Istiar means you are borrowing a, a particular characteristic. You you you, you are applying it into uh, into another thing. Like for an example, when you say someone is brave, right? You say he is brave as a, a lion. That is a simile, right? Because you are making a comparison between a person's bravery and a lion's bravery. But when you say a person, no, that one, he is not brave. He is a lion. Right, so you're calling him a lion directly. That is because uh, forget the fact that he is like he is not like he is the lion. Right, when you use that kind of description in Arabic language, it's a figure of speech. It is referred to as istiar, and that is what is being used here to describe the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That uh, with respect to the Muhammadan light, the Hakika Muhammadiyah, that he is likened to the. To the, to, to the lightning, the lightning is a, is a Mohammedan light, right? And the and the rain clouds is like the, the messes that descend from that Hakika Muhammadiyah. And then, like Allah says, Wasi'at rahmati kulla shi'in, my rahma covers everything. We never sent you, but there's a mercy to all the world, right? Um, all of these. Uh, it's a it's the R is a figure of speech in which to describe the, the particular aspect. Al mali ati mali ati means it is full. Naatun li muzunin li kulli mutaaridin. It is so full that it will uh, it it has the ability to quench. Li kulli mutaaridin mutaarid means somebody who is thirsty. Somebody who is thirsty, that is muta'arid, right? Minal uh, buhuri. Buhur is the plural of bahrun. Bahrun means seas, right? Some, uh, or, or oceans. Well, awani, and awani means rivers. Like, so you have big seas, and then you have uh, small body of waters that are referred to as uh, rivers. Now, the allati tamla'u kullu man yata'arradu the man yata'arradu laha taliban li madad li madadin taliban al madad minha min al anbiya wal awliya so now this is referring to the the spiritual madad the spiritual madad that the awliya and the anbiya receive from the haqiqa muhammadiyah so that is what it refers to and so al awan Rivers refers to the Aulia and Al-Bukhur refers to the Aulia. Right. Um, 
Allamiri, Allamiri, no, no, Wanurika means that in your light, Atf, Ala Aini Rahma, Lamiri means to give off brightness, to give off uh, what you call brightness. Allavi, the one which, uh, uh, the one which has filled Bidalika Nuri Kaunika Kaunika means your entire creation so the the, the 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 entire creation itself receives this Rahamat or this divine mercies right? and these divine mercies are referred to as the light in this particular instance and hence uh, Kaunika meaning your uh, uh, creation right Alladhi malaata it has filled the entire creation right maf'ulun al malaat al haita it surrounds na'atun li kaunika bi amkinati al makani every single place in all of the places that are out there um al mansub ila al makani wa khuffat al yaa'u an nisbatu li nisbati li li sajii wal ma'na wa nuruka al mudii alladhi mala'at bihi kawnuka kawnaka al muhit bi amkinati kulli makanin wa al kawni al ha'it huwa al amr al ilahi alladhi aqama Allah fi zawahir al wujub fa hadha al amr mamlu'un bihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he was just describing what I just described now uh, with regards to all the different parts of uh, uh, places of, its, uh, of, of existence and creations that are receiving this rahamat or this, uh, uh, this light. Allahumma salli wa salim ala aini now this is the next part and I think uh, actually I was going through all of this I wanted to go through to the rest of the end but uh, this is going to take way too long if I carry on um, explaining further I think this is a good point to stop at so from here we will do the last uh, portion of Allahumma salli wa salim على عين الحق التي تتجلى منها قروش الحقائق إلى المعارف القوم سراتك التامة نسقم So this uh, salawat I know when you read it you <laughs> before, you, before you even enter the meanings it's usually very heavy by itself now let alone now going through way by way. I said, I said, I like to one. She is so big. Brothers are left for sure. Like, we were sending the same thing. Right? <laughs> 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 Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So, in any case, um, it's a, it's, it, it, it's, it's, I, I know that a lot of the words that I use here, they are very heavy, very uh, good handed. So, <laughs> yeah, like reasons. So, Jawaratul Kamal is uh, what you call, it's a, it, it's, it's value. Okay, I'm not going to explain the words now, you know, what you call it. Uh, it is said that it's, the, well, its value is not even higher than Salatul Fatih de Maulika. When you compare the two Salawat, Salatul Fatih de Maulika is higher. Mm. It's higher in terms of its reward, and it's higher in terms of its, um, um, the, uh, the, the manner in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, is we, we, uh, Allah is being asked to send salutation upon him because that describes the Salatul Fati itself. You will find it. Uh, Shaq Bai explained it to me once in Surah Al Fatah, the beginning part of Surah Al Fatah. Inna Fatahna Laka Fatham Mubina. Those first four or five ayats, then the whole Salatul Fati is there. Right. And then when, when, you, when you explain it and you explain its uh, significance, we didn't go into that when we explained the Salat of Fatih because at the time when we were doing it, I, I thought we will just go through 
the meanings and then just uh, go over the surface uh, because I didn't want to make the, the, the explanation too long. And then, um, but now with the Jawaratul Kamal here, uh, I see I am forced to break a bit so that we can uh, properly check each and every single word of what it means so that at least we can have some idea of what it <laughs> So in any case, um, it's a, it's, it, it's, it's, I, I know that a lot of the words that I use here, they are very heavy uh, to go handle. So, <laughs> May Allah is Jesus. Um, so Jawaratul Kamal is uh, what you call it's a it's it's value. Okay, I'm not gonna explain the words now. Uh, what you call it? It's a, it is said that it's the well, its value is not even higher than Salatul Fatih the Maulika. When you compare the two Salawat, Salatul Fatih the Maulika is higher. Mm. Is higher in terms of its reward, and it's higher in terms of its um, um, the the, uh, the the manner in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, is we, we, uh, Allah is being asked to send salutation upon him because that describes the Salatul Fatih itself. You will find it. Uh, Shaykh Bai explained it to me once in Surah Al Fatih. The beginning part of Surah to Fatah, Inna Fatahna Laka Fatham Mubina, those first four or five ayats, then the whole Salat al Fatih is there. Mm. Right. And then when, when, you, when you explain it and you explain its uh, significance, we didn't go into that when we explained the Salat al Fatih because at the time when we were doing it, I, I thought we will just go through the meanings <coughs> and then just uh, go over the surface uh, because I didn't want to make the, the, the explanation too long. And then, um, but now with the Jawaratul Kamal here, uh, I see I am forced to break a bit so that we can uh, properly check each and every single word of what it means, so that at least we can have some idea of what it is that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is is being described. And, and and the book that I'm reading from is really a summary. It's really a summary. <laughs> Um, there, there's many kitabs that have been written on the Salawat of Jawaratul Kamal. The one that I have, um, uh, which was a collection of all the 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 the, the 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 lectures that were given on this Salawat Jawaratul Kamal by uh, a, a, a Sheikh uh, 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 Muhammad Al Idris, uh, right, Al Iraqi. It has more than 600 pages, mm. right? It has more than 600 pages, right? More than 600 pages. And then there's others that, uh, uh, there's also another one that I, I, I have, which has got more than 270 to 300 pages. So what I'm reading here is only like three and a half pages. <laughs> <laughs> it's three and a half pages, just to, to skim. The, those other pages, the, the authors that have written those kitabs, they, they actually bring some ayat and hadith that refers to each aspect of, of everything that has been discussed. 